Welcome Case Western Reserve University incoming students. We've got a brief informational session today on opportunities in the performing arts. My name is David Rothenberg. I'm the coordinator of undergraduate studies for the Department of Music. I'm Jeffrey Ullum. I'm the director of undergraduate studies for the Department of Theater at Case Western Reserve University. And what we're going to do today is kind of describe to you some different opportunities both in classes and outside that are available to all students on campus. This is our Department of Theater building, Eldred Hall. It's on the main part of campus. We are a university department in the sense that we invite all students to come and participate, whether they are going to be theater majors or minors, or whether just students who have a passion about the performing arts. We welcome everybody. We offer several different shows a year, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But we offer a wide range of classes uh, that are available to all students. You don't have to major in minor. You can take some certain classes that uh, will satisfy your different interests, be it performing, be it in terms of design, writing, in terms of history. We have a wide range. We have a, a great tradition here. We're the second oldest theater program after Yale. Uh, in the United States. And you can see from our wide range of pictures that we have, we vary training, we have professional faculty, we do a wide range of shows in order to expose students during their four years here uh, to a wide range of productions. Uh, we usually will do a Shakespeare every other year. We also do musicals frequently. But then in addition to that, we try to vary the experiences for the audience. Since we have a very intellectual community, we get to do really interesting shows as a result of that. The faculty that you see here, here's some of their faculty. Uh, this is Ron Wilson, who's one of the leading uh, stage combat and comedia specialists. We also have our designer, costume designer. This is a Steve Martin's The Underpants. We have uh, some new hires to our faculty. This is David Vey. That's him in Saving Private Ryan. We also have uh, Chris Bohan as an acting teacher. We, we have several acting teachers because we have a graduate program in acting with the Cleveland Playhouse downtown. And we don't have TAs. And so the people who are teaching these classes are working professionals. And we also have our chair, Gerald Scott, who teaches directing in addition to classical text. I'm a historian myself, so I teach the theater history classes in addition to the introduction to theater. And the value is that you're getting the real experience from trained professionals who we don't just sit and live on campus. In the summer and during the year, we're out doing professional work. We bring these contacts and these experiences back to our students to try to help prepare them for perhaps you know, going into this as a career or just perhaps in a general way to improve their, their public speaking abilities. The types of shows that we do, there's going to see a whole range of productions here. As I mentioned, they range uh, in terms of size, in terms of scale. And Shakespeare's obviously your larger productions, the casts of 15 to 30. Sometimes the musicals are obviously big as well. So if you're interested in performing in terms of music, there's different perhaps opportunities for you there. Um, but we want to make sure, we want to challenge our students. The, the benefit and the joy of being an educator here is that our students are so smart. And they're all driven, and they're all very, very successful. And we want to make sure that we're providing challenging work to our students just the same. We usually don't do very simplistic, simple shows. We want work that is going to push them in the ways that we know how to push students to try to make themselves better. We're interested in building a scholar slash artist. At the same time, with our productions and our rehearsal schedules, and I, I know that music has a lot of these same concerns, is that we want to make sure that you are succeeding in your classes in our program and outside of our program because it won't do our department any good if you're struggling academically. Um, and so we as faculty are very well aware of the different demands placed upon you at a academic institution of this caliber while at the same time expecting your quality work here on campus uh, just the same. It's, it's, it's a very uh, enjoyable department to be a part of. It's very challenging. It's rewarding. You know, as we always say in theater, the joy is in the work. Uh, and that certainly is, is the case here. And our students, we are a smaller department compared to some of the larger science departments on campus. But the benefit of that is that we get to know our students extraordinarily well. And we also learn how to uh, provide some of the different nuances in terms of education and scholarship that our students are interested in exploring. We do independent studies all the time. If you have an interest in a certain field that we're not offering, come talk to us and we'll try and find a way to do that. We also have a really fascinating study abroad program that was created just a few years ago at RADA, um, Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is basically the training school, uh, the best training school in the entire world. Uh, if you've ever seen the cast of Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, that's basically RADA graduates. Um, we have, they came to us to create a program. 
And so we have a specific program with them where you go abroad and you study in a conservatory style uh, in the spring. And we've had sent students over there for the past two years and it's been in existence. It's been a remarkable experience. And being a case student and being a theater major or minor, you don't have to major or minor to be a part of this. Um, you get an, an, a wonderful opportunity to see London theater, to learn about the profession in a different kind of way, but also learn about history. It's really quite wonderful. When we look at different opportunities for students that we have at Case, in terms of what classes you may want to take, these are classes for non-majors. Of course, if you want to major, uh, you'll meet with me individually or, or any other faculty member that'd be willing to help you uh, to talk about some different possibilities. The first of all, we have acting here. We have a general acting kind of class. Uh, Theater 100 uh, is an intro to acting class that's for non-majors and minors. It's open to anybody. We also have Theater 101 and 102, which are other acting classes. Theater 101 is for minors, Theater 102 is for declared majors. And, uh, but we very much are kind of open to scheduling because we know that as a freshman you have a lot of different scheduling requirements uh, in terms of if you're going to double major, if you're doing SAGES classes. And so we're really kind of flexible with trying to make sure that we can fit within your schedule. Design tech, some classes you can take. Theater 105 is stagecraft. It's much more about uh, the hands-on experience and building and designing sets. Theater 111 is the intro to design. That's taught by Angelina Heron, the costume designer who, for whom you saw a picture of. Uh, where you look at costume, you look at lighting, and you look at set design, um, and some of the basics there. And from there, you can go on to look at uh, some other specific designs uh, for a whole semester if you choose to. Playwriting history. I teach the history uh, classes. There's a wide range of them there that deal with American theater, more contemporary theater, Asian theater, uh, the more standard Greek to Shakespeare type of approaches as well. And then, of course, there's the general theater, the last one that's on the list, which is our standard intro to theater class, which kind of covers the gamut. We look at playwriting, look at development of playwriting, and the development of conventions of playwriting. We look at the creation of directing as a concept and as a profession. We look at design ideas so that ideally, whether you go on in theater or not, you can look at any film, any play, any TV show, and really begin to appreciate uh, the different standards that have been uh, implemented or the artistic choices and aesthetics that are uh, in, that, in, that, in, in that work of art. And the same thing I think applies to uh, dance performances as well as music. And so these, these, are the, these are the primary classes that we offer that usually first year students can take. Uh, we, very, we don't encourage students to necessarily take higher level classes. I, as the theater history teacher, uh, I'm usually against having first year students uh, take my history classes. It's better to under understand how the university works and once you're kind of more acclimated to college classes, uh, I think you'll do better in those because in those classes you're against you know, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, so things are interesting to wait, but otherwise the rest of the classes are completely up to you and they're all uh, appropriate uh, for you at your level. When you look at the different classes, the possible fall semester, this is kind of uh, the, the schedule that is presented to you. Uh, this is one for majors, but you see where it says Theater 102, that can be for any student whatsoever. We have a lot of freshmen that, especially if they're coming in pre-med, which we know a lot of students are, uh, they sometimes will wait to take Theater 110. They will wait and take that sometime in, in a later year, but they get started in the acting sequence because we have a lot of acting faculty, and so we have a lot of varied acting classes, acting for the camera and all these sorts of things. So go ahead and get started in the acting sequence first. And we also have, as you see down there at the bottom, a theater practice. Them. What this is, is that you have to complete seven hours um, as, as a theater major. This is for theater majors only. If you're not interested in that, then you don't have to sign up for that yet. Uh, but we wanted students to get some practical experience in working on shows so that they, they know what it's like backstage. Uh, they know um, what, how, what it takes to make sound operate. Uh, if that's appropriate uh, phrase, uh, how, how, how to run things backstage, how to build, actually build sets, build costumes, uh, how to design sounds for shows. And so the practicum really, we put students in different jobs every semester so that they can understand more of the totality of what is needed to create theater. One aspect I wanted to mention real quick that's not necessarily related to theater but is equally as important is the dance department. Dance and theater used to be the same department and they split about four or five years ago. And so, and so so we're very much in tune with each other. Dance is a wonderful department here. Uh, they have an emphasis on modern dance uh, as a structure. And you can see some of the courses that they recommend there. If you're interested in dance uh, and following dance, I would recommend that you contact uh, Karen Potter, uh, who uh, is really in charge of placement because a lot of what they do and exactly where to go uh, in terms of classes is it's decided by meeting them first. I'm not sure if it's audition based or whether just meeting so they can talk about your experiences. Uh, but it's definitely worth uh, meeting with Karen Potter is her name. She's a delightful 
a woman and, and has been running that program for a long, long time and is seeing it blossom uh, over the last uh, 10 years. It's a wonderful program. They do Matacall. They invite everybody uh, to come and perform at Matacall. It's an open invitation to all students, whether you're a dance major, dance minor. I had students in one of my classes last year who never danced before, was in Matacall. Uh, you know, just to get that unique college experience, you're going to do things now differently than what you've done before, to try new things, which is the joy of college. Uh, and that's exactly what they did. And dance is a wonderful place to explore that. So you can see some of the classes uh, that dance offers there. And keep in mind that our uh, and our classes and the dance classes will satisfy the humanities requirements, whether you're going to be major or minor or not. These classes satisfy the humanities requirement. Um, that's, that's part of the Sage's breadth requirement that we have. Um, beyond that, if you have any questions about our department, we welcome everybody. Uh, feel free to email me anytime. We have a meeting at the beginning of the year that is open to everybody. We'll have audition information available on our web page. You can see our uh, season for the upcoming year that's available on the web page. Uh, if you're nervous about auditions, you don't need to be. I can put you in contact with current students or directors of shows to get some kind of ideas to what they may be looking for. But we are not cutthroat. We very much want to support all of the students that are, have an interest in theater and have an interest in, in the performing arts. And so we are a very welcoming group. We are very happy to have uh, students be a part of our organization and welcome to CASE and we hope to see you around Eldred Hall sometime soon. And now I pass the powerful baton of PowerPoint over. Well I'm going to talk now a little bit about the Department of Music. Here you see a picture of Hayden Hall. Uh, it's spelled just like the composer Haydn, but we do pronounce it Hayden. It's not named after the <laughs> composer. Um, and this is located right on the Mather Quad. Um, it's where the music department offices, classrooms, and library are located. Now, if you're interested in majoring mu in music, chances are you've already been in touch with us. An audition is required um, for the majors in both music and music education. We're one of the very few departments on campus um, that require uh, an audition uh, for admission, or we require admission to the major. So most incoming music majors have already auditioned uh, via the arts supplement on their application to CWRU. This was a video audition. If you did not submit the arts supplement, but you're interested in majoring in music, you should contact Eric Charnofsky at the email given to schedule an audition. Um, and that will happen during orientation or the first week of classes. The other thing is that incoming music majors need to take a diagnostic test in uh, music theory, and that happens during orientation. Mr. Charnofsky will tell you all about that. Um, if you're interested in majoring, here's what a typical uh, first semester music curriculum looks like. You take lessons on your uh, primary instrument, and you also participate in recital class, which is a weekly meeting where all the music majors come together, and over the course of the year, all of them perform. So your music lessons are for two academic credits. This is an hour lesson each week with uh, a faculty member from the Cleveland Institute of Music. We have a joint music program with the Cleveland Institute of Music, and they handle all of our applied music or music lessons. You'll You'll also take a music theory course, either Music Theory 107 or Music Theory 3. These are for three or four credits, also through the Cleveland Institute of Music. You'll participate in an ensemble. These are things like band, orchestra, choir. These can be taken for zero credit or for one credit. And there's also a very special musical movement class called Eurythmics. We require music majors to take it for two semesters. Um, and you don't earn academic credit, but you do earn PE credit for it. Um, if you want further information about our departmental performing ensembles, go to the website shown here, music.case.edu slash ensembles. If you'd like to know about taking lessons, you should contact the department at music at case.edu. Um, and we also have a music minor, um, for which there's a rather long link given up on the screen. <laughs> or you can just go to music.case.edu and navigate your way to the page about the music minor. Now here are the uh, opportunities for non-majors. There are core selectives that you can take, offerings that are intended for non-majors that will teach you about various aspects of music. There's also a minor in music, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. Um, all students can take lessons with Cleveland Institute of Music faculty, though as I'll say in a little bit, there is a fee for that if you're not a music major. And all students on campus are welcome to audition for our performing ensembles, of which we have many. Now the music minor um, consists of 15 credit hours of coursework. Six of these credit hours are in music theory, so two semesters. Then you have to take uh, th uh, six more credits or, or two semesters of music history or appreciation. And then three additional credits, which can be another course, but they can also be ensemble participation or 
applied music lessons. So it's a very flexible music minor. Here are some of the courses that are designed for non-majors and for minors. You can see we have MUTH, Music Theory, 103 and 104. These, this is a year-long introduction to music theory for non-majors. We have MUGN, these are general music courses. MUGN 201 is an introduction to music. It tends to focus on classical music, but also um, exposes students to other types of music as well. Um, gives you uh, a guide to how to listen to music in a more structured way, how to appreciate music. We have a course on the history of rock and roll. This has proven to be a very popular course in recent years. Also a course on history and styles of jazz. A digital music course, uh, which is taught in the core. That's our uh, computer music lab located in the basement of Hayden Hall. We also have a music education course, World Music and Education, that's open to non-majors. And a music theory course, 319, on jazz skills. This is for students who uh, have some experience playing jazz and want to learn more about composition, arranging, and theory. And we also offer, through the Department of Music faculty, various SAGES courses in music. There are also various 200 and 300 level music history courses intended primarily for majors, which you can take with the permission of the instructor if you have sufficient background. So as I said, lessons are available to all Case Western Reserve University students. Um, there's no additional fee for music majors, but for non-majors there is an applied music fee. Um, and this fee is $750 a semester if you take weekly half-hour lessons, which earn you one academic credit. Or it's $1,500 per semester for hour-long lessons, which earn you two academic credits. And if you want to know more about how to enroll in lessons, simply contact the music department, music at case.edu, send an email there, um, and we'll, uh, we'll help you uh, get started with your lessons. Now, we have many ensembles. We have large, some large ensembles like our bands and orchestras. We have some small ensembles like chamber music ensembles. We have some vocal ensembles, choir, etc. We have instrumental ensembles, band, orchestra, chamber music. Um, most of these ensembles have auditions. Some of the auditions are gateway auditions, meaning that not everyone who auditions is accepted into the ensemble. They're selective. But some of them are also merely placement auditions, where uh, the ensemble takes all comers, but you take an audition so that the director can know which vocal part to assign you, which instrumental part to assign you to, etc. Here's a list of our ensembles, and you can see we have a lot of them. And I'm not going to read off all the names, but you can see that they include wind ensembles. These are wind bands. They include a symphony orchestra. They include a chamber orchestra, string chamber music, percussion ensembles, jazz bands, a popular music ensemble, which has been up and running for the last several years, which focuses on more recent popular repertoires, uh, a concert choir, and also several uh, very, uh, very high level early music ensembles, like the Early Music Singers, Collegium Musicum, and the Baroque Orchestra, for example. So there are lots and lots of opportunities. And again, go to music.case.edu slash ensembles if you want to learn more about particular ensembles and if you want to know what the audition requirements are for the ensemble in which you're thinking of participating. Here are just a few pictures of our groups performing. This is our Symphonic Winds, our large wind ensemble, performing in Severance Hall, the home of the Cleveland Orchestra, which is located right here on campus. And from time to time, our groups do perform there. It's a lovely, lovely space. Here's our uh, University Circle Symphony Orchestra, under the direction of my colleague, Dr. Kathleen Horvath, performing in Kulas Hall uh, at the Cleveland Institute of Music. That's another performing space that our ensembles sometimes use. Here's the Excelsior Ballroom in the Twing Center, right on the middle of campus. And this is another space that our ensembles use from time to time. You can see that it's uh, cleared of chairs right now. So when we have concerts in there, the chairs are set up and there's room for plenty of audience there. Um, it's another very nice space. This is the Church of the Covenant, located right on campus. It's not, uh, it's not part of the university, but it's a, a church in the community located right behind our department home in Hayden Hall. Um, and it's also a, a, an institution with which we have a very good partnership, and a lot of our departmental performances uh, take place in there, especially our choral and orchestral collaborations, of which we've done uh, several in recent years. This is Harkness Chapel. 
Uh, this is located also on the Mather Quad, two buildings over from Hayden Hall. This is uh, formerly the chapel of Mather College. It seats about 300 people, and this is where the weekly recital class for music majors take place, and it takes place, and it's where uh, a lot of our smaller ensemble performances take place, our chamber ensemble performances, our choir performances, etc. cetera. Um, this is the, the stage of Harkness Chapel, and there's our concert choir performing there under the direction of my colleague, Dr. Matthew Garrett, who is the director of choirs. Um, this is another picture of Harkness Chapel. This is the Camerata Chamber Orchestra. You can see all the string players up there on stage. Um, the Collegium Musicum and the Early Music Singers. These are some of our renowned early music ensembles performing in Harkness Chapel as well. Um, and there's the KCIM Baroque Orchestra. This is an orchestra in which students learn historical technique for playing violins, cellos, basses, etc. Um, and they also learn how to play what we call continuo on the harpsichord. A very high level group, um, open by audition. Um, and you don't need historical uh, experience to start, but you need to be a pretty good string player. And then the director, uh, Dr. Julie Andrzejewski, um, can help you develop your historical technique. But here's a, a picture of the group being guest conducted by Ton Kopman, who is one of the very best known uh, directors of historical performance ensembles in the world, founder of the Amsterdam Baroque, um, um, and an extremely well-known harpsichord virtuoso as well. Here are our jazz bands directed by Paul Ferguson, who's not in the picture, but they're, they're performing in Harkness Chapel. And also at Nighttown Restaurant, um, a, a local jazz club located just steps from our, the upper part of our campus, the South Campus, where a lot of students live during their sophomore year. Here's a picture of um, our large teaching classroom. It's the Harkness Chapel classroom, right next to the chapel performing space. It's where I teach most of my classes. I happen to be a music historian. Um, and here's a picture of our core music computer lab. This is a, a lab in the basement of Hayden Hall that has several workstations with up-to-date Mac computers with the latest and best uh, music composition, notation, and editing software. Here's a picture of the Spartan marching band um, uh, performing during a football game at Case Field. Now this is an ensemble uh, which can grant you PE credit if you participate. So those of you who have some marching band experience and want to continue that, it's a great way to perform in this great ensemble, have some fun, and also earn PE credit while participating in a musical activity. This is Denison Wade Rehearsal Facility. This is located in the residential quad um, on North Campus among the other dorm buildings, and we have some rehearsal spaces and practice rooms in there. So it's where most of our large uh, ensemble uh, rehearsals take place. And it's also, we have some classrooms, so it's where some of our theory classes take place and where a lot of individual student practice takes place. This is a um, picture of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame located just a few miles from campus in downtown Cleveland. Um, just to say that uh, we have a very well-developed program in popular music, and we have a popular music ensemble that performs and records rock music and other popular styles. So if you're a drummer, electric guitar player, bass player, or vocalist, and have interest in this ensemble, look it up on our ensemble's webpage and find out how to audition for this group. It's directed by my colleague, Dr. Rob Walser, who is a musicologist and a music historian, that is, and a performer on numerous instruments, um, one of the world's foremost experts on popular music. And finally, here's the picture of the Temple to Fareth Israel located right next to campus in what is becoming rapidly part of campus. And this will be starting this fall, home of the Maltz Performing Arts Center. So this old historic synagogue building is being renovated and turned into the Maltz Performing Arts Center. The main sanctuary, which sits under the big dome that you see, is being turned into Silver Hall. This will be a large 1,300 seat performance space suitable for orchestral band and choral performances. You can see here an artist's rendition of what it will look like when it's done. It's a very, very exciting development that will have this fantastic new space uh, for some of our performing groups starting this coming year. And then uh, the building will be renovated in, uh, in phases. And more and more of it will open as the years go on. There are some student-run performing organizations at Case Western Reserve. These are very good, high-level musical 
and musical theater groups that are not run by the department. They're student run. And so the way to find out about them is, frankly, to get in touch with students who are involved in them, um, find their student directors, and learn how to audition for them and participate in them. Um, we very much encourage their activities, but since they're not departmental ensembles, we don't supervise them. We let the students run the show, and they do a wonderful job of it. If you have any questions, you should visit our department webpage at music.case.edu or send an email to the address music at case.edu, and your inquiry will get directed to the proper place. So um, I encourage you, if you have musical experience and interest, to participate in uh, whatever musical ensembles are on campus that interest you. We've got a very, a very vibrant musical community here. I didn't even mention uh, that the Cleveland Orchestra which performs regularly in Severance Hall, is right on campus. And there are very, very affordable student tickets available. Um, and so that's an opportunity of which you can avail yourself. The Cleveland Museum of Art, located right on campus, has an excellent uh, concert series. So there's a lot going on, um, both as a music lover, but also as a musician. So seek out the opportunities, audition for lots of ensembles, and most important, I think, have a great time with it.